This segment brought to you by Aimpoint. Hey, Larry Vickers here. We have a trip down memory lane for you today. This is the CAR-15, or essentially a clone thereof, of the weapon that I used the majority of my time I was in Delta Force. Colt Model 723, that was the technical term for it, the Colt catalog term, so to speak. We just called it CAR-15. 14 and a half inch barrel. They also offered them, and guys in the unit were using them with the pencil barrels. I had the grenade launcher M203 cut barrel you see here, which was later then known as the M4 barrel, although it existed prior to the M4 adoption. Moving back, what looks like some kind of a weirdo laser or whatnot on the bottom is just simply a flashlight. It was a QXL dive light, which was actually molded blue plastic. So in order to make it black, they would wrap it with black inner tube, spray paint it, use hose clamps to attach it to the bottom of the handguard, and then we would put a Surefire IR lens cover right there. Double mag clamp right here. This is homemade. It's one that I made myself out of 100 mile an hour tape and cardboard. They had them made with metal brackets for the double mag clamp. The problem is that would transmit vibration when you're firing the weapon through one mag to the other magazine and drift that top round forward. If you use the cardboard and the 100 mile an hour tape, it'd take out a lot of that vibration. Moving up top, Aimpoint 2000. This was my introduction to the Aimpoint brand. Good piece of kit. One inch tube, four MOA dot, what looks like some kind of a weird light emitter here or transmitter on the side is nothing more than a battery compartment and a rheostat right here. You have plastic elevation and windage covers. In order to keep it waterproof, you had to have the covers in place. So we'd get guys that would lose covers and whatnot. Over time, they would fog up. It would take a while, but in order to keep these waterproof, you need the caps. This was a game changer to me. Went through OTC with iron sights, was using iron sights, went to A squadron, saw guys using a red dot. I tried it, and at that point, I realized the advantage that something like an Aimpoint Red Dot Sights brings to the table. Daytime and nighttime use and your ability to engage targets rapidly is a complete game changer, and that's why they are so common to this day. The way that Red Dot Sights are used today kind of started back in the Delta Force late 1980s era with the Aimpoint 2000. And the CAR-15 M4 use that you see today kind of started with this gun. Of course, things evolved. Now flat top receiver is standard on your M4 style rifles. This had a transitional receiver, an A1 style carrying handle, A1 style rear sight, A2 brass deflector. All right, the Canadians, to their credit, the C7, C8 took this design. Definitely not superior to the flat top Picatinny rail you have today, but for a carrying handle, upper receiver, really good piece of kit. All right, moving farther back, two position buttstock, all the way out, all the way in. We didn't have multiple positions at that time. In order to get that sweet spot position for your body armor, we would take it into the sweet spot and then have the armors drill a little bit of a recess so you could slide it in so you had the correct length of pull when you had body armor on. This is a great gun, great optic, great piece of kit. Got me through harm's way and got me home safely, so I'm very partial to this setup. Special thanks to Aimpoint for helping us put this video together. We got some live fire coming your way, LAV style.